Alright, still working on that intro. We are playing a little bit of Starfield today. Now, I am going into this game completely blind, so we're basically just going to roll with the punches. Also, I'm using my headset so I can get a more immersive feel. Hopefully the audio games will suffer. Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. Can I help you? I'm afraid Mr. Slayton is a very busy man. I'm sure you do. Oh, there does seem to be a hole in his schedule. Nice try, but CEOs don't just walk through the door. They make appointments. I'm afraid we just can't book any more appointments today. Goodbye. Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. I'm afraid we aren't taking appointments right now. There was no other way for you in. All she had to do. Take my fucking thing. <laughs> Just bopped a uh, oh, friendly on the head. Win, so they fled. Where do you go? Mirror Wally. I cannot wait to kill you. Clearly isn't the executive, but he's on to us. Walter, uh, taking what's mine, then breaking into my office. A bold move, but one easily counted. Oh, we 
trapped. Hello, Walter. Here, are you there? Lisa? Took longer than I'd like, but I managed to pay off one of Slayton's security consultants. They've patched me in. All right, we've got her out. Once the door's open, just follow her instructions, okay? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh man, I do love that option now. That is a beautiful option, I'm but I'm aware go with this of the one. irony of me continuing to say it'll be easy. But it'll be easy. Yeah. I know how to kill good. I guess there will be like one survivor. I don't know where that one lady went. Disappointing. Take what you must. There was something out there. It's gone now. Is something amiss? I am always willing to carry an extra weapon.
You know, it's moments like this that really makes Neon the best place to do business. You steal what's mine. I trap you in the city. You infiltrate my office. I lock it down. Where else can you match wits for the highest stakes but here? <laughs> I'm done negotiating. Someone or something for whatever is left behind. Hoping to get him. I hear Slayton's had some major layoffs recently. Never a good sign. Mission is always welcome if they have any. Clover <laughs> over at Keltcom. She's too good for Neon. Sounds like she's trying to help someone or something. Honestly, I kind of tuned her out. Get on my ship and go. Cold-blooded murder was a line I told myself I'd never cross. Do you really think we did the right thing back there? There was no other way. I can't argue with that. 
just used to costs only being measured in money whenever I can help it. It is rarely only money, Walter. Now you have seen that. Well, I may not agree with every outcome, but you did everything to accomplish our goals and more. I don't often get a chance to work in the field. So, thank you. You might wish to lighten your load. One is less likely to the ambush on its way down. I could have been using my fucking special magic power. Just knowing what you are be dangerous. Our distance from you is the whole point. We interfere now because we must. I'm not liking what I'm seeing on the scans. The energy output from that ship is far above the normal range. If we spin up the grab drive now, we have a chance. My attention. Is that I'm it then? Trying to do this little walk. Not realizing that I kinda just fucking got kicked out of the quest. 
still getting so used to this place. It does not quite feel like home, but hopefully someday. Stop. How is Neon? Are you? Are you okay? Okay. I'll start transferring the data over now. Let me just bring it up on here at the table. Is that... Is that a prototype? No, that material isn't anything we... What the... Everyone, come take a look at this. That's no faction vessel or Crimson Fleet. Secret military tech, maybe? Mm, no United Colonies Admiral approved that starship design. They call themselves the Star. Demand we hand over the artifact. Like we were children, playing with the kind of things. What do people know? Any offshoot groups go by that name? None in any corner of the settled systems I've seen. Maybe a distant human colony, finally popping its head up. Uh, another house for room. I very much doubt that. We ignoring the obvious here? A heretofore unknown group who just happens to know about the artifacts. I'm just gonna say it. Intelligent alien life, or extra-dimensional beings. The original creators from the furthest fringes of space. Or beyond even that. Is the metaphor of avenging angels coming down to keep humanity from forbidden knowledge not apt here? So, we have a lot of theories, but nothing concrete. Except that they're after the artifacts, and they're willing to take them by force. Or what Walter said. They were acting like a parent. Worried their children are playing with something they don't understand. So, they're strong-arming us for our own good? That doesn't sound very divinely benevolent to me. Some glints of shine in the dark. Ready to hand them out as soon as you please. Now that we have a moment, I wanted to ask how you're feeling. After your experience at the temple, you've given everyone at the lodge quite a scare. That's distressing, but to be expected, I suppose. According to what I've heard, your body absorbed an almost unquantifiable amount of energy of a type we can't even begin to understand. We're dealing with something unknown to modern science. Who knows how this encounter has affected your body or your mind? I know, and I feel terrible that I can't provide you with the proper reassurance. That temple proves we're dealing with entities of unknown origin. The problem is that we can't even begin to guess what their intention was towards us and where they've gone. Perhaps that's true, or perhaps you were simply quite lucky. It's just that... Oh, I'm afraid that we're flying almost completely blind here. All we know for certain at this point is that whoever created the artifacts are the same beings that built the temple. Anything else is just guesswork. I might as well put on a blindfold and toss darts at theories written on the wall. Oh, believe me. This is positively exhilarating. Think about the significance of this research. The questions it raises alone are mind-boggling. Who was this wondrous structure built to accommodate? How long ago did these entities inhabit our universe? Are they still out there, somewhere? Perhaps? We'll need more data to be sure. It's funny. 
I used to think the artifacts were the end all be all of scientific discovery, the pinnacle mystery of our time. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine it would lead to something of this magnitude. I just hope that you'll come through this, whatever it is, unharmed. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. Look, I've already taken up too much of your time. All I can do is promise that I'm not going to make you deal with this mystery alone. Whatever might be happening, I'll be right here to help you every step of the way. Need something? I do not wish to judge, but I doubt you truly need to be carrying all of that. about you, but a fella could do a lot worse in consolation. You had a hell of a shake, getting bullied in the void. Starborn sure know how to make an entrance. Ready to head back out there? The Eye can help you find the artifacts, but I'm afraid she's blind to our new competitor. Double check the safety and locks wherever you go, okay? Exploration's dangerous, even without some nefarious group trying to kill you. Did you need something? If I can take a few things, I will. All right, then. I may regret it. Something I'd like to ask you about. Take note. Everyone here is worth learning from. Yes, even the kid. Not my first time in a hostile negotiation. I don't know. Admittedly, I usually know more about who I'm facing off against. I'm very interested in what Noel can learn from the scans. The technology on that ship was impressive, to say the least. If there's a chance, we could learn enough to duplicate some of it. I got to where I am by taking advantage of opportunities, no matter where I find them. Might as well make the most of this crazy situation. Despite our differences of opinion back on Neon, I'm beginning to respect you as someone who can get the job done. I'm beginning to wonder if there's anything you can't handle. I'd like to test that theory. My Star Yard's been having a little trouble getting our next project off the ground. I need someone capable and decisive to step in and steer it in the right direction. Interested? Love the enthusiasm. I knew there was a reason I picked you to help with this project. It's a new ship. We want to diversify our fleet. Now, I don't know why the people I pay very handsomely to come up with new designs can't seem to get out of the R&D phase. And frankly, I don't care. I just want someone, you, to go there and show them how it's done. Excellent. You want me to go to ship? Send Got it. Done. To the project lead, Jules de Gante. So long as you let me take it out for a spin every now and then. I'll be instructed yeah, you know? to listen to you and follow your direction. I expect big things from you, so I'm excited to see what you manage to deliver. I don't Boy. believe you'll let me down. It's gonna be powerful as hell. I hope you are satisfied with the players available to you.
Yeah. his company has accomplished, and for good reason. I wish to speak to you. Never would I have imagined to encounter something like the Starborn. Now I feel that rather than having answers, we only have more questions. I suppose this proves that idea succinctly. Regardless of how impossible they may have seemed before now, I must say that I do not like being threatened by anyone. If so, what would that be? Clearly, the Starborn are connected to the artifacts, which would mean that they are also connected to that temple you found. Did they make these things? Have they appropriated them? This all implies there is something more, something we do not yet understand. Yes, given our first interaction with them, that seems likely. We will need to be on our guard from now on. They seem to know much about us. Perhaps we can learn more about them to make it even. We should return to our search then. There is still so much to do. Not much going on. Practical and doable, given our time frame. Oh, this must be Walter's consultant friend. Please, come join us. We've been waiting for you. Hi there. Hello. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll do a great job. Wow. Yes, of course. I'm sure Walter had a great reason for choosing you. Let's get to it then. Yeah, he chose wow. you because I know how to get shit done. I was not expecting that. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. There are a lot of factors to consider. Who is our market and what do they want in a ship? Which components are we putting into it? How fast should it go? How much cargo capacity should it have? What color should it be? We need to decide every little detail. Sure, I'm Jules, R&D project lead. I am, was, the one making all the big decisions. I suppose I just coordinate now. You already heard from Frank. He's lead designer on the project, focused on the look and feel of the ships. There's Ella. Another senior designer, she focuses on some of the more technical designs of ships, went to school with Frank. Mike is our senior engineer, responsible for consulting on all the technical bits, the machinery, the computer systems, etc. And then there's Nev. She's here for marketing. It's her job to weigh in and sell this thing to consumers. Okay, good. So, before we can do anything, we need to resolve the budget issue. We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. 
So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? I'd love to, seriously. It would be a huge win for us if we came in under or at that budget. But none of the viable designs for this project can be made for that amount. I've already rejected that budget, so I have to go to the board regardless. And since you're now responsible for the major decisions, which budget proposal we go with falls on you. It's more that we can only choose certain design elements at the expense of others. In other words, if we go with something in Mike's design, there's not enough money in the budget for what Ella wants. That's one of the reasons we haven't been able to agree on anything. While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical, and the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus this ship in any given direction. And they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs. And would something that expensive actually sell? That sounds good to me, but remember, this ship will have fewer bells and whistles. We're not going to be able to include everything we want. Frank's luxury design has the most expensive components, and we've been having trouble convincing him to move away from that idea so we can stay within the budget. We need his help. Do you think you can get him to budge? I am right here, you know. I already gave my answer to Jules. We cut nothing. Is that all? Oh, maybe if Jules had phrased it like that to begin with, I would have considered it. I do. It's a gamble. If we go over budget and the ship doesn't sell, it doesn't look good for us. Fine. I see what you're saying. Perhaps we tone down the luxury aspects a bit. Does it really need so much gold trim? Probably not. For what it is worth, I believe that is the correct approach. Luxury should not be the goal here. Also, Frank annoys me. Great! That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Well, Mr. Stroud believes you fit in our target demographic. We heard about some of your adventures, and we tend to agree that getting data from someone like you will be helpful. Frankly, most of our test pilots played a little too safe, and the scenarios we run don't push the limits as much as we can get away with legally. But luckily, we don't have those same concerns with you, because you're not technically employed by us, and Walter trusts you. Great! Just pick up a mission or two at the mission board, and proceed like you normally would. We'll collect the data when you return. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But, if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team, get to know them, give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of... favor? Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but, um... Uh, there's always next time. Regardless, I'm excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? Well, 
I mean, I did paint my spaceship once. Good. We were worried you knew nothing, and this would be a complete disaster. As long as you are willing to listen to us, we may still avoid that outcome. Now, I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current starship market? Uh, yes! Finally, a kindred spirit operating on my own wavelength. You see, while many ships will operate to that end, few ships are designed with exploration as the primary goal. It is my belief that if we build a ship with that in mind, Strata Clint will dominate that market sector. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration fueled by ordinary people like you and me. Yeah, that's what Jewel said too. But at least that gives me something to think about. Thanks. I'll refine the idea and propose it next time, I guess. Why do I feel like answering this could be a trap coming from someone who was sent here by Walter to step in and take over our project? Ah, it's not like I have anything to hide. I used to think working for a super wealthy corporation would be terrible, but honestly, it's pretty great. They've been good to me, and the stability is way better than any startup. I've had opportunities I wouldn't have anywhere else, so yeah. Pretty great. See you around, I guess. I'm wondering if we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again, I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. Well, quite the opposite, actually. See, I don't care who makes the decision, so long as someone does it. And said proposal doesn't make me regret getting into engineering. You get me? Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. Let me tell you, all the creative minds around here are so concerned with designing the most innovative and fancy ships possible. They never stop to think about the kind of work it takes to do that in a reasonable time frame. Yes, we're engineers. Our job is to make the bloody impossible possible. But that doesn't mean it's easy or practical. That and there's never enough of us to go around. Couldn't figure it out from the engineering tour. I'm an engineer, mate. It means I'm the one who's got to put together all these plans and actually make the bloody ship fly. Been doing it for going on 25 years at various star yards. <laughs> they still haven't realized this place would fall apart if not for me. Instead of letting me get to my work, they keep giving me fancy new titles and got me tied up in endless meetings like this one. No, I'm just trying to set realistic goals. Sorry, that ain't exciting to you. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fires. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming. And no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy, no frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it. Our objective should be to build a huge ship with plenty of cargo room while keeping the cost low. Doesn't need fancy equipment, just the basics. Basic weapons, basic defenses, basic scanners. You get the idea. If we go with a design like that, I can focus on quality construction and the ship will practically sell itself. Hmm. Yes. Of course. Zhuzh it up. Just enough to disappoint me even more when we ultimately end up choosing something ridiculous. Thanks.
Hope we didn't scare you off, huh? Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? Oh, no. Well, it's just... I'm a little new here, and everyone's got these big, flashy designs. And I'm Not supposed to come up with one, too, to. but, like, I don't know if it's as good or, like, good at all, even. Can I tell you? Part of me was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> so, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not like super luxurious like our Adonis Pleasure Yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> you probably think that's stupid, right? I used to go off-world camping with my family when I was a kid. The other families we met always complained their ships weren't quite adequate for family vacations. They never had enough room, and the kids would always fight. I've done some market research, and like, no ship manufacturer seems to be making ships for things like this. Which means even if the demand is low, we can fill this niche and still sell a lot. Hmm. I haven't thought of all the details, but... I'd imagine lots of passenger space would be a top priority. A mid-sized ship with enough room for one... Mm, or maybe even two or three families to spread out and relax. I don't think you'd need any fancy weapons or scientific equipment, so it should be pretty affordable. Families don't want to spend a fortune, so keeping the cost low will help guarantee plenty of sales. Well, you listened to my idea more than the others did, so I'll take it as a good sign. Thanks. Uh, see you later. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over ten years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. I did not say that. Hmm. And yet, if we must play by corporate rules, perhaps my ideas will appeal to you more than my colleagues. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. High-end performance. Precision engineering. A spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. The ship should be mid-size, spacious but not bulky. We'll want to build it with the highest quality, most expensive modules available. It should feel safe but not threatening. Focus on defensive measures, not aggressive weaponry. Above all, you should be able to picture your favorite celebrity, or Walter himself, flying this ship and influencing others to buy as well. Hmm... I think I understand what you mean. It is not enough to say it's a high-end luxury ship. Who is flying this ship? Where do they go? What is their story? And why do they crave such attention? Oh, thank you. I will think on this and improve on my proposal. Later. I'm actually kind of... That data from your ship is going to be critical to our design process. Assuming... Oh, yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not, I guess. I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded free stars. We 
You'd want to give it strong weapons, tough defenses, plus good speed and maneuverability. Most Starfighters are fairly small, and the tricky part is keeping costs down with all those fancy modules. I'm glad you brought that up. No, and yes, there's a lot of work out there that requires a capable fighting ship. But the real success comes from UC military contracts, which we would hope to attract by building a higher-end version of this ship platform for them. You could be right. There's got to be a better way to pitch the idea. I'll give it some more thought. Thanks. Lots of work to do, but we'll get through it, and don't worry. Every time you want to run a tour group through here. Our investor visits are the key to making Gagarin a place that works again. A place where people want to live again. People are living here just fine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have security work to get back to. You're not on my calendar. Is this Arkmite related? I'm on Gagarin to make money, not friends. Arkmite? We're the galaxy's premier heavy equipment firm. Diggers, construction robotics, that sort of thing. And we're on Gagarin to take advantage of an opportunity. The city's old mech factories have been sitting dormant for years now. But they're open again thanks to us. <coughs> We've automated the old assembly lines and brought plenty of money to the city in the process. It's a win-win for all involved. Oh, Chief Pretorius? She thinks Gagarin is just peachy being poor and run down. Has no vision. But Arkmite does. Thanks to our investment, the largest formerly shuttered mech plant in the city has been refurbished and is churning out some of the finest heavy equipment in the settled systems. And we're sharing that vision of a revived Gagarin with others. We've been bringing in investors, showing them all the potential of this place. We were only asking the Chief to make sure the areas we'd planned to visit didn't have any malcontents running around. Unfortunately, some of the locals don't appreciate all we've done for the city. <laughs> we expect they will. After all, what truer sign of respect is there than a high-paying salary? <coughs> this has been lovely. Really.
We have to redo the puzzle. <sighs> Even after I got it done so quickly. We've got people poring over the data you collected as we speak. Versatility may not be what certain customers are looking for. So you managed to complete a couple different missions. This will give us lots of data to support building a ship that can tackle a variety of scenarios. Of course, if we build a ship like that, we may need the kitchen sink budget, but we'll see. Thanks for your help. Now we just need to solve our interpersonal issues so we can agree on a design. Easy, right? <laughs> You seem awfully confident for someone who doesn't know how long we've been dealing with this. I've tried everything I can think of besides <clears throat> some sort of hokey team building exercise. So, what do you think you can do differently? Hmm. I can't believe I didn't think of that. It's fair. Everyone goes around the table and makes a cut. That way no one feels like they're the only one being asked to compromise. This should drive us towards a more focused design. And since Walter asked you to take the lead on this, I don't have to be the villain here. So you're sure about this? <coughs> Great! Let's get ready to disappoint everyone equally! I thought it was obvious. Until now, that's how it's gone, but no one's relenting. Wait, you didn't mean actual physical fighting, right? Nah. <sighs> well, here goes nothing. Okay, everyone. Our friend here, remember, not me, has decided in order to move forward, 
We're going to go around the table and everyone is going to give up one major aspect of your design. It's the fairest way to do this and ultimately, I think it's going to make our collective design choices a lot easier. Who wants to start? <coughs> okay, fine. I'll go first. I'm willing to cut some of the included hard points. It'll mean less firepower, but the consumer can still add them afterwards, I suppose. You're looking at me, huh? I guess that means you want me to go. Oh, look, I'll be easy. You know I wasn't looking for anything fancy, but if I've got to make cuts, uh, we can reduce some of the cargo base. Uh... I guess we can cut some of the extra sensors and data collection equipment? As long as this thing can still make it to deep space and back with no problem, I'll be happy. Um, I'd be willing to give up some of the passenger space, maybe. Yeah, that should be okay. Frank? What? I already agreed to cut a significant portion of the luxury features, remember? I shouldn't need to cut anything else. Well then, that wasn't so bad. I feel much more confident we can actually build this thing. We're all super glad you're here, right, everyone? Well, we are. Based on the decisions you made, it looks like we're going to end up with a very reasonable ship design. I have no worries about the feasibility of manufacturing and selling it. It's going to be a smaller, sleeker, mid-range ship. I think it'll be best suited for an average consumer. Not too expensive, the ability to add a few options here and there, moderately defensible. It'll be decent for several use cases, but won't really excel at anything in particular. I hope not, but it's possible. If the ship sells well enough, the board will have no problem increasing the budget next time. The data you gathered for us will last a while, too. And I think I picked up some useful techniques from you to help us work together better. Now that we've addressed all our issues, we can move forward, finalize the design, and get this into production pretty quickly. If you could do us a favor and let Walter know that we're back on track, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Thanks for your help. Back again. Who do you think will be the first to ask us questions? Mateo or Noel? I hope you are satisfied with the quarters available to you. <laughs> I'm expecting big things. At this point, I don't care what you have to do to get that project back on track. With it. Good to hear. I figured as much. See? I just finished looking over the final design they sent over before you arrived. I've got to say I'm impressed with it. It's a bit safe, but also an elegant evolution of our past designs. I think it's going to be a great addition to our fleet. I'll be happy to make it my new personal ship. Additionally, I want you to have one of the first off the assembly line for all of your hard work. Feel Get free, free to pick ship. it up at the start. Bro. Thanks again. It's not worth it.
I'm actually curious as to how many people can fit on this ship, crew wise. Could I ask for a better ship? Oh no. No, please don't crash. Please don't crash. I just got you. Alright. Um. I'm just kind of just like chilling here a minute. Um. Yeah, I figured I would just do uh, this like little exit thing. That way, anytime you hear it, from now on, you'll know that. It's just going to be like this set recording thing I have that I'm just going to tack on to the end of videos. So, yeah. Hope you're oh, enjoying these. Because <laughs> I'm getting a bit heated here. Whew. Yeah, well, see ya.